in this panel, I wanted to bring a patient perspective, consumer perspective, and uh, uh, though time is less, but I would like before we have a brief discussion amongst the panel, Saurabh is executive manager of UNICEF, and he has uh, an experience of managing his thousands of people online during this period, and I was casually talking to him, plus at his home, he is using the home health devices, and he had some good, bad, and not so good things to say. Briefly, Saurabh, can you tell this panel after you heard that what do you think? Are we talking in boardroom or, or are we talking the language you people would understand as consumer? Well, thank you very much, and, and, and really congrats to the eminent panel. A very rich discussion here. Uh, I'm speaking in my personal capacity uh, here right now, and, and basically it is uh, that I'm all for telemedicine. I have, uh, like a, from a consumer side of things, I've seen that's the need of the hour and how it has helped uh, many of us uh, seeking uh, RT-PCR tests or uh, teleconsultations and how this has been so, so helpful. But at the same time, I see uh, enormous potential moving towards healthcare 3.0 or whatever Pratik was uh, uh, putting across uh, in terms of prevention, in terms of predictive support and health. Uh, uh, Dr. Bhandari, I would say one of the challenges I faced in remote monitoring concept was the compatibility, user-friendly nature of the devices. Uh, they don't sometimes speak to each other if you are an Apple friendly person, uh, then it means a Google uh, uh, Android device or whatever. So, so basically the challenge of having the various uh, measuring devices speak to each other, uh, user friendliness of them, uh, able to transmit that information, the data uh, more easily and securely. Data security is, a, is an important point there. Uh, and, and at the same time, I, I think that we would uh, really as patients, uh, probably, you know, as from doctor's side, uh, the infographics, ability to play these graphics of data sets and see how the trends look, are we in the right way? Uh, what are the uh, things to be uh, more careful about during those trends if there are some red alerts or flags there? So some of those things, if introduced, uh, would be extremely helpful uh, in, in, in uh, you know, both having the buy-in at the same time, uh, also to better understand uh, uh, the progress and, and, and the limitations. Uh, so these are some of the thoughts I would put across at this hey, point. Thank you, uh, Saurabh, for that short notice coming. Kamal Kothari is, uh, Pratik, one of the earliest batches of IIMA, brightest person I know. I have not met him for a few years. He was in Shipping Corporation of India, started with Industrial Credit, and he has written a book which is a very bright book. And I, I would like Kamal to say something uh, he has been raising. And thank you, Kamal, for attending this webinar. And we really want to construct some model which takes into account intelligent uh, audience for which this all Edo is about. Well, uh, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to speak. Uh, basically, I'm not a doctor. It's very well known. But from a management perspective, I think all the ideas which have been talked about today are excellent ideas. The problem really lies in implementation and implementation in India. If we can implement these ideas, I think the medical capacity of the country would go up by 10%, 20%, 50%. I don't know today, a priori, but it would certainly increase. Now, the basic problem is twofold. First is that the new doctors who are coming out, they have to be educated into the concept of telemedicine and how they should use it. That is my first point. And second, the existing doctors also need to be educated how they can be much more efficient by using telemedicine. So these are the two things which have to be done. And I think we will have to involve the government because without their involvement, I don't think any of these things can happen. This is the only Thank observation. You, Thank you. And I think I will, to be kinder to the audience, I will come to end and I will request panelists to make last uh, one uh, brief uh, comment and beginning with Tanvi. 
Uh, if you want to have a last message, we'll go over to the panelists and conclude the panel because we have overshot the time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Banthari, and, and to everybody else here, it was um, a, a very good education for me. Um, I think the industry is both ripe with opportunity and challenge, and it's, it's all going to come down to um, creative problem solving, but keeping the patient uh, really at the center. So thank you and um, all the best. Uh, Pratik, you have something to say finally? before we close the panel? Uh, sure, Dr. Bandai, thank you. And, uh, you know, yeah, absolutely. It was a great discussion. A uh, lot of insights from, from various quarters. So I think that's fantastic. And uh, I echo the thoughts of uh, Mr. Kotari that uh, one of the things which is critical in Indian perspective is the implementation part of it. And I think uh, today we have enough tools in hand to keep it really simple and develop a model, a centralized model, which can really uh, give a good start, uh, you know, and, and India is a country where we have all sorts of, uh, uh, you know, population sets available to do and run those pilots. So I think that could be a starting point. Uh, and I think there is no dearth of uh, technologies and devices that are in hand to really make it a successful implementation. So thank you so much for your time today. Dr. Ganju. Yeah, again, thanks very much for having me as part of this discussion. I think a lot of the solutions and technologies that we talked about uh, have been around for a while. So uh, they have been implemented very successfully in many other sectors. But I think uh, COVID is probably going to provide us a perfect storm to create the conditions for us to accelerate a lot of transformation, both within India and globally. So I'm I'm an optimist. I, I'm hoping that this uh, the challenges that we face currently will compel us to make the shifts necessary towards a more patient-centered uh, healthcare, uh, uh, healthcare environment. Finally, Dr. Jaya, before I conclude. <clears throat> the uh, key point that I want to make is that the ecosystem perspective that we talk of requires the role, not just of the central and state governments, not just of the medical profession and the hospitals or the pharmaceutical industry or the medical equipment industry, but the NGOs all the way down uh, to the lowest level, the framework of the uh, governmental setup uh, and the panchayati setup up to the panchayat level in the village, you need this holistic approach where you focus not just on health, but education, nutrition and public health. So looking at healthcare without integrating AI-driven public health, epidemiology driven by public health, uh, again makes it a silo. We call it an ecosystem, but it's still not a holistic ecosystem. We are still in a health silo, uh, at best a preventive health silo. And that is no longer sufficient. Whether you look at uh, the illustrative cases I mentioned, you need to provide everything in a targeted manner. And it is possible with the simplest of devices, which is a 2G phone. So we are not talking of high technology. High technology and whatever is being done is absolutely essential. We need innovation and creativity at all levels. And that is possible uh, even with all the constraints that we have today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jaya. Raj, if still you are there, we would like to hear from you how your perspective changes after this brilliant discussion. I think it's, um, I truly believe in it. I think the key here is the uh, patient engagement. If patient engagement comes, everything will work. And the second piece is the clinicians. So they have to feel they're not only responsible, but they're responsible in making sure the outcomes are effective. And so incentivizing them on that basis, these are the two are very important models. And the third is the care coordinators. I feel this is uh, like, as uh, Akar said, I'm very optimistic this will really take off. And uh, there will be a lot of the shortage of the care coordinators in the world. And uh, India can take advantage of it because I come from technology world. When I started the technology was nothing, but today look what India has taken advantage of that so much. And India has a great opportunity to create these care coordinators in a bigger way, not only for India, but around the world. And the government can institute the education, you know, creating, creating the world standard care coordination aspects of it is a huge opportunity for the country um, beyond the, just the IT. 
Again, thanks for all the panelists and everybody participated. And it's a great uh, discussion. So I hope uh, uh, we're foundation, uh, Dr. Panari is working, see how we can actually, as a catalyst, create this program, which will really bring the change in India related to this. So we look forward to working with the people who can really coordinate with us. And uh, so I'm looking forward to this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. And I think uh, more than this, I have recorded more what panelists did not say. My focus as a uh, uh, management person is to make sure to take care of why it did not work in different areas. And definitely it gives a lot of insight. I once again thank, I couldn't have asked for a better panel for this discussion. Thank you very much for sparing your Saturday with us. And foundation is much more wiser than what it was before the panel. Thank you very much once again and wishing you all those friends in India a safe for time and a rapid uh, thing end to the COVID waves.